The East African Community Audit Commission in its report for the financial year 2015 reveals that the Inter-University Council of East Africa from its inception has failed to make its monthly staff contributions to NSSF Uganda. Council did not comply with NSSF Act by not effecting monthly contribution to NSSF. Lawmakers of the East African Legislative Assembly won the ESC institution which is based in Uganda to comply with the pension laws of the country. If the University Council of Uganda is meant to pay by the host nation obligation that you should pay it, then they should pay. There's nothing, there's nothing you can, there's no way you can hide. By 2012, NSSF had put the debt to the tune of 3.8 million US dollars, approximately 13 billion Uganda shillings. NSSF's managing director Richard Biarugaba says this figure has since increased to over 30 billion Uganda shillings. Uh, the liabilities are quite large um, in Uganda shilling terms. Um, they are all us or they all their employees up to the tune of 3.6 billion shillings uh, in areas. Uh, in addition, uh, if you include in the tax uh, interest element, it's about 3.7 uh, billion shillings. And if you include in the penalties for the fact that they haven't uh, paid for this long, then you're talking about another 23 billion shillings, which brings the total to about 30 a billion shillings. East African Community Secretariat based in Arusha, Tanzania has on the contrary asked to be exempted from NSSF contributions. Regulation 4 in uh, the East African Community exempts the member states, especially the hosting members, so automatically it will be exempted. But at the same time, uh, the, 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 the regulations and the laws within Uganda under the NSSF Act compels the members of the staff to pay NSSF. So the East African community is basing its argument on the regulation under which they are employed. The law says that um, if an institution wants to be exempted from paying NSSF, they have got to have a, uh, a scheme that is equivalent or better than NSSF. And B, they've got to apply to the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development for that exemption. As far as I'm aware, uh, this institution has not done uh, the two. But if they are to be forgiven, then the same thing should be done to every other institution that is in another partner state, so that there is a principle for all institutions that are in the different partner states, because each institution has got workers. Uganda's State Minister for East African Affairs, Julia Swandera Maganda, says the Council of Ministers have directed the Uganda Retirement Benefits Regulatory Authority to iron out the row between NSS of Uganda and the Inter-University Council of East Africa. By October, we shall be coming back with a report that will now guide whether uh, the member uh, staff are supposed to pay NSSF or they are being exempted. It is something which is being handled at a ministerial policy level. Biarugaba says failure to remit workers' savings is a violation of their rights which could attract legal action against the community. Uh, certainly it is a, a denial of rights and I believe that it's a matter that needs to be resolved. We've also been able to collect the records uh, which are then necessary for us to be able to uh, go to court and basically uh, prosecute this this matter but also the court can force them uh, through a court order to be able to uh, compensate uh, these employees the court also reveals that partnerships as of june 2015 had not remitted their contribution to the inter-university council to a tune of 9.6 million us dollars which is about 32 billion uganda shillings Uganda is the biggest defaulter to the tune of 3.2 million US dollars, Burundi 2.7 million US dollars, Tanzania 2 million US dollars, Kenya 1.2 million US dollars, while Rwanda, the debt to the Inter-University Council of East Africa, is only 416,000 US dollars. Jingo Francis, NTV, Weekend Edition.